Hey guys, I'm gonna throw some balls out here and go through a little practice routine that, uh, I don't know, I guess it's different. And let's try to explain what's going on. This is something that me and some of my friends used to do a million years ago. We did not invent the thing, okay? And we used to call it a pretty derogatory name based on a European country. Uh, but nowadays, I've always just called it a reverse pool. And what that is, is every shot you shoot an object ball into the cue ball and make that object ball. You can either go through the cue ball, and I'll explain that, or off the cue ball. So right now, I'm going to shoot the seven into the cue ball, try to go off the cue ball in the air. This is just a regular carom shot that I've talked quite a bit about. This is probably most common. And all I have to, I have no depth perception. So it's, well, there's no shots in this game that are easy for me. And we'll just leave it at that. But if I can, if I can find that correct tangent point, I hit a sliding ball into it, then there it goes. There's no penalties for scratching the cue ball. If the cue ball goes in a pocket, the way we always played it, the spot's in the center of the table. That's the way we always played it. Looks like we've got a, a, a similar shot on the 15 into the side now. I guess if I, I guess I could do the four. And, no, I think the 15's an easier shot. Look at this, at this 15 ball. It's kind of an in-betweener where I could go off this tangent point or I could actually shoot through the ball. I'm going to try to shoot through the ball and explain what, I, what I'm doing here. There's a point on this cue ball that is closer to the side pocket. It's over here. I can't see it from back here, but, but if I can keep in my head where it is, then I can aim at it. And that, you aim it with top, just, just straight top, for the most part. I can put a little bit of top left or a little bit of top right. It doesn't really change the cue ball path. It can change the object ball path. Or, I said cue ball. The top right would, would not affect the path of this ball after it goes through the, the cue ball. But it could impact the cue ball's path. And that can come into play on if you have a danger of a kiss. And if I get one of those, I'll show you. So what I'm going to do and I'm trying to remember where this point is over here. And aim it with a straight top. The shot here is very susceptible to speed. Because remember, when I cut this ball, it goes along the tangent line. And then because of the follow, then it goes forward. The harder I shoot, the more it goes along. This is an exaggeration. The more it goes along the tangent before it curves forward. It's, it's very susceptible to speed on a shot. I'm looking to see, you know, what might be best for me. Uh, I think in this case, I'm going to try to shoot Carom shot on the four ball into that pocket. Did find that point. You know, wish that I had better depth perception so I could see that point better and hit a stop shot and at that point. We're talking about going through a ball. I'm perfectly straight in. The 13 
into the cue ball into the side. That's fine. There's no penalty for, for putting the cue ball in a pocket. So if this cue ball goes in, what do you do? It's not, actually it's not 100% straight in. The, the, thir the 13 might not go in the pocket and the cue ball. They might not both go in. Anyway, this is the same deal. Finding a point on this cue ball that's close to that pocket. It's not quite straight in, but it's pretty darn close. You just hit it with top. penalty for the cue ball going in uh, it spots in the center of the tape they had a very similar shot before what was it the four ball into the side what I found over the years is that these shots where I want to shoot through it's the cue ball in this case, but in real life it would be the object ball. I'm getting my terminology messed up. Is I can shoot through the other ball if it is a half ball hit or fuller than a half ball hit, if that makes any sense. This here, if I aim at this point over here with follow, it is fuller than a half ball hit, so the shot is doable. If the eight had been like down here, then that shot doesn't work. Then I'll be looking at a carom shot, shooting off the ball instead of through the ball. But in this case, I'm going to try to shoot through the ball. Find that, finding that same point again. You shoot it with straight top. I don't have to worry about a kiss, so I didn't have to worry about. Uh, putting any kind of side spin on the ball. That's the only time I ever bother with side spin. This time I'm going to use to shoot to 12 through the cue ball. You know, finding this point that's over here close, close to that thing. And I'm trying to keep it in my mind and aim at it with top. Now it's a pain in the ass. Now it is a pain in the ass. Probably be a lot easier if I played this game all the time and I, I could see you know the shots. Um, as the way it goes now, I don't even know if I'm seeing the correct shots. I'm thinking that I can shoot the 14 through the cue ball into this pocket. Find this point over here. Try to keep that in my mind. It's fuller than, than a half ball hit. Put a decent stroke on it. Follow. Almost. Almost. I was waiting for a, a, a carom shot to come up. And I'll go ahead and I'll do this one. The, the carom shot is going off the ball, not through the ball. Just my terminology, I think. On a carom shot, any place on the table I can do, I'm just going to move the ball through. If I want this five to go on the side, I can completely block right now. I can't do a carom. The only time I cannot do a carom is if I'm eclipsed, and I can't, and I can't do it that way. Put the five down here. I could Hit, hit the five end of the cue ball very thinly and go in the side. I could also shoot through the cue ball like I've, I've already been doing. So for going through a ball, my rule is that it's got to be a half ball hit or more. For a, for a carom, it can be any place unless I'm eclipsed. From here I'm not eclipsed anymore, and if I had a good enough stroke, I could put this five ball anywhere on the table, any on any of the six pockets, with a carom going off the cue ball. 
or by going through the cue ball. If I wanted to go to like here, I could actually carom the five into there. I could carom the five down into here with some draw. I could draw it back into here if the 14 wasn't in the way. So much about pool is feel and experience. When I was first taught this kind of stuff, I didn't have either one of those things. These are good starting points, though. These are good starting points. And then as you gain more feel and gain more experience, you know, maybe you, you don't need to need the starting points as much anymore. It, it becomes kind of a feel thing. I look at this shot right here, and I know I can carry them it. I can hit the cue ball really thinly and put the five in this pocket, or I can go through the cue ball. And I just know just from playing that it's easier to go through the cue ball in this case. Still not, still not 100 percent make of a shot, but for me, easier than hitting that cue ball really thin and going in like that. Now this should just be. I can't go through the cue ball with the 14 because it's less than a half ball hit. It's close enough to the pocket now that I could probably get away with it. But this shot lies better for going off the cue ball. For just a, a carom shot. Just find that point over there. I've talked about finding tangent points and stuff before. Just find that. No penalty for that. That was a good shot, though. Now it's getting easier and easier, isn't it? So I'm pretty darn straight in. Well, I'm almost exactly 100 million percent straight in. 11 cue ball in this pocket. In theory, I could just follow make the cue all in this pocket, the leather follows it in. Um, no, I'm not that good to do that consistently. I get you to 12, through the 12, and make the 12 up here, maybe about one out of every 50 times. And then my best chance in this is to carom the 11 off the cue ball into that pocket. This is a situation where I do have to worry a little bit about a kiss. And this is where that feel and experience comes in. This is where luck comes in. Because I don't have any feel or experience. For yeah. Really, I mean, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to scratch. And you don't do that playing pool a lot. Not on purpose, unless you're dumping or something. But if I was playing nine ball and, and the nine ball was hanging right there, Sure, maybe I'd want to do that. There's no nine ball over there. I'm trying to scratch the 11 into the side pocket. And I'm hoping the cue ball doesn't come back. I have to hit this a little bit lower and a little bit harder to maintain that stop shot action so the 11 doesn't pick up any roll on the way up there. I just cross my fingers that I don't get a kiss. Now they didn't come close to a kiss, so I had no feel for whether or not I was going to get it or not. On this side, I could really, in theory, put the 12 in either this corner or this corner by going through the cue ball. And I'm just kind of looking at it to see which, which one I like better. I don't know why, but I think I like putting the 12 up here better. So I'll find this point. On the other, it's on the other side of the cue ball. But if I can keep that in my mind and just hit with a nice stroke and, and 12 o'clock. Then put that in. So 
I'm just going to summarize here as, as well as I can. I, I don't know if it's going to do any good or not, but to go through the ball, if I want to go through this one, and I want the cue ball to go into that side pocket, I want to do it by going through the ball. Find the point closest to whatever my target is. Keep that picture in my head and hit it with top English. Or with follow. It's not really English. Just hit it with follow. Very sensitive to speed. And it's also very sensitive to being able to remember where in the hell this point is, even though you can't see it. For anything that is a half ball hit or fuller, that method works pretty well. Subject to the speed and all that. It works pretty well. On going off the ball, if I'm going to shoot the cue ball off the one, not through the one, into the side pocket, I can do it right here because I'm not eclipsed. I have to hit this one very thin, though. Very thin. But any place on the table where I'm not eclipsed, I can do that carom shot. I can shoot off the one really into any pocket, depending on how good my stroke is and all that. Uh, as long as I'm not eclipsed. I can't... I can't carom the cue ball off the one into that pocket, for example, because I'm eclipsed. But any other pocket I could. If I was good enough, I could do that. I can even just draw straight back, that type of deal. So you have a much wider range of what you can do, possible shots. For me, I, I would almost say it's easier to see uh, the going through the ball type of a situation. But it, it really depends on the angle. If, if it's a pretty straight angle like this, it's easier for me to see following through the one into that corner than it is to, for me to see caroming off the one into the side. So it all just depends. And it's probably not just the shot, it's probably the players when what are you know some people are going to be better at seeing it one way than seeing the other. The problem with following through this one though is that it is a much longer shot. I'm shooting at, at a, a spot over here on the one ball I can't see. It's a harder shot than the straight carrying in the side would be. So even though I don't see it as well, I probably, in, in, in a real game, if there was a real game based on this, I would have tried to do what I just tried to do. Just do the carom shot. I think that's it for this video. Hey, again, the, uh, the video you just saw was just me just shooting balls, whatever ball in whatever pocket. But I forgot to say, if you're like a real glutton for punishment and you really hate yourself, you could play nine ball. One's got to go off the cue ball into a pocket. And then the two's got to go off the cue ball or through the cue ball into a pocket. You could play eight ball. You could play one pocket. You, I guess straight ball is kind of what I just got done doing. But it doesn't have to be what I just did. It, depending on your skill level and your interest and your... How much you hate yourself you can do all kinds of things with it it's good practice and it's kind of fun for me because just because it's something different you know it's not that i get really bored doing the same thing over and over and over but it is nice to have a little bit of a change of pace and that definitely uh, does provide a change of pace bye guys